to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Merrifield? Here. Councilmember Rice? Here. Councilmember Yan? Here. Councilmember Kennedy? Here. Councilmember Bledsoe? Here. Councilmember Grubb? Here. Councilmember Mason? Here. Councilmember Manella? Here. Councilmember Blood? Here. Thank you. If you'd all rise, we'll have the uh, prayer by D.D. Meehan and the pledge by Councilmember Bledsoe. pray gracious lord in this advent time as people hustle and bustle we pause to give thanks for what has happened and things that will happen we give you thanks for the events of pheromone in the past weeks the opportunity to share in the feast and the small town shopping opportunities to hear vocal tapestry skating rinks and morris park our father help all these events to inspire us to do what we need to do to make our city, our county, and our state and nation a better place in which to live and raise our children. Bless our misgivings, guide us with hopes and visions, and lead us to thy light that will guide us this season and for all seasons. We ask and pray blessings on all of us here. In thy name we pray, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Dee Dee, and thank you, Barry. <coughs> okay. Trust everyone's had a chance to read through their minutes from the last meeting. If there's no corrections, adjustments to the minutes, is there a motion to approve the minutes as written? So moved. And second? Second. All in favor of approving the minutes as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved as written. Okay, we now have no public hearings scheduled for tonight. Announcements? Joshua. I have nothing, Mayor. Okay, Frank? Yes. Yes? Okay. Merry Christmas. Okay, we're rolling. I don't have anything either, Mayor. Wow. Door? I can't believe nobody said anything about the Feast of the Seven Fishes they, because it was outstanding. They knew you would. They knew I would. Yeah. Okay. Just, it, was, it was the best one we've had, and it was very impressive at Arts and Antiques with the jazz bands and everything. Also, the uh, Bicentennial postcard, which has been designed and copyrighted for us for the uh, upcoming year. So. I, I think it's very impressive. It is nice. Sure. Deputy? Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Hanukkah, and I Happy wish Kwanzaa. everyone to be Kwanzaa. safe and healthy and uh, come back next year. I like it. Okay, thank you. Donna? Um, again, Merry Christmas to everyone, and Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. Um, I hope everyone has a safe one. And I went to the feast, and it was wonderful. It was blessed. Okay, thank you. Eric? I regret not making it to the feast. I was really disappointed I didn't get to go. I ended up being out of town unexpectedly all day. Uh, can't wait till next year. Uh, but aside from that, also Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay. I also attended the feast. I know Tom was there and several others, and it, uh, it was chilly, but it was a great time, and as it always is. Um, hard to compare one to the other I don't think we need to they're all fun um, the food was excellent plenty of it ate too much same as always but um, and also uh, Merry Christmas to everyone um, and a safe holidays in particular and a happy new year okay the city let's see city managers we no citizen, citizen petitions sorry New story with the C. We have one citizen petition. If you'd state your name, sir, um, as if we didn't know, an address, and you have five minutes to address council. Uh, Dee Dee Mann, Three Park Drive, Fairmont. Uh, at this Christmas time, the words spoken by Charlie Brown and at other times by Linus comes to mind. I bring you good news of a great joy shall be to all people. 
today I want to stand before you to echo these same sentiments in two brief arenas of Fairmont. The first is that today 85% has uh, fulfilled our pledge of reconciliation. 36 days of 42 to support the downtown schools and shops, shops and services and support the Fairmont <coughs> Friendship Room has been quite successful. In visiting, listening, and hearing, there has been an overwhelming positive response to both efforts. Over 85% has been a positive response to the Friendship Room in its location. The joy of the Feast of the Seven Fishes and the Shop Small Business Saturday since last you met is evident in newspaper stories and personal testimonies. The goal should be to try to make every day a replica of the Feast of the Seven Fishes or Shop Small Saturday. Our Pledge of Reconciliation is attempting to do that with good effort. This positive approach has brought lots of people downtown every day. Somebody is calling me or emailing me to say because of that they're buying gas at Raymond's or they're buying a pair of shoes as our church bought 19 pairs of shoes or they're getting their hair cut and so the results of downtown shopping has been uh, quite successful. The concerns that I've heard have been just in the area of parking, the Middletown Commons coming in and sustained support for the downtown, particularly with online shopping. A fourth concern is the homeless, but it has not been a major issue for us. <coughs> Since the Friendship Room has had its soft opening on November the 19th, over 60 people have been involved have been receiving services and been assisted with uh, uh, professional help. Thus, with uh, this success, I think that the two movements are working together quite well. It is good news of a great joy. And the second good news of a great joy, and Dora Kay will love this, it's, as she already knows, is our spatial 200th anniversary of the city with a spatial worship service on January the 12th at 10.30 a.m. at First Presbyterian Church. I bring this up to you because you'll be meeting pretty close to that date in the new year. The highlight of this service will be to trace 200 years through the eyes of seven people that will illustrate what has happened in Fairmont over these past 200 years. The eyes will be Boaz Fleming by Dr. John O'Connor, uh, Maria Hall by Nancy Jones, M.M. M. Neely by Taylor Downs, Francis uh, Pierpont by Dr. Dan Weber, Mayor Earl Strait by his son Earl Strait Jr., Margaret Decker by Ruth Martin, and Ron Strait on his career on city council. Gene Lambert will share briefly the history of this 205-year-old church Jim Thompson will do the call to worship, and special music will be offered along with the Cambridge Handbell Choir that will reflect <coughs> the music through the years. Through the church, our homeless coalition, participation in the Pledge of Reconciliation, many of us are trying to make Fairmont an inviting, inclusive, important, and inspirational place to be, to live, to work, and worship. I invite all of us to that effort. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to report that the, just because of the holidays, that the next meeting of council will, will be in three weeks, which will be January 14th, 2020. And also, um, <coughs> My first Feast of the Seven Fishes, which was really wonderful despite the rain. I think the turnout was still, you know, th there was just a lot of folks down there and a lot of things happening, so it was really wonderful. And I just want to pass along a big thank you to all the many volunteers that, that worked so hard for that effort and for all, also to our city employees who worked to clean up, uh, clean up the area before and after the events, so just wonderful. And again, just to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and uh, safe and Happy New Year. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Same to you. Okay, at this time we'll uh, turn the meeting over to Mr. Jim Christie, who will do the presentation. <coughs> or were you going to be involved tonight?
He's he's okay by himself. Okay. This is the uh, tr the rail trail analysis report. My name is Jim Christie. I'm with Civil and Environmental Consultants. I was hired by the city uh, to look at the cross trail, cross town trail. Uh, for those that, you, that don't know what that is, we have a rail trail to the north of us on Morgantown Avenue and a rail trail to the south of us um, at the end of Industrial Boulevard or Industrial um, Road. So what we're doing here is we're not recreating the wheel. We have this large trail network um, within the eastern United States, and it's all based off the Great Allegheny Passage. The Great Allegheny Passage is, uh, is the, the king of all the trails, and everybody wants to replicate that. Uh, that trail goes from Pittsburgh to Cumberland, Maryland, and then it changes names and becomes a national park, uh, and it's called the CNO Towpath Trail. That goes from Cumberland, Maryland to Washington, D.C. Uh, that trail, Great Allegheny Passage, is, was a 20 plus years in the making. And what they have now is over 800,000 users a year using that trail. <coughs> Equates to somewhere around the $40 million range in economic development per year um, for the last study. So these are the kind of things that we're thinking about. Um, my background is in recreational um, master planning. So what I do is economic development based around recreation. I go into areas that are typically depressed uh, mining, factories, and we, th we rework that system um, utilizing recreation as a basis in tourism. So in this scenario, we are a missing link here in Fairmont. Uh, when I moved uh, back to West Virginia from Colorado, um, where I learned my recreational master planning skills, came back and I realized we have this great uh, rail trail from Parkersburg going to Pittsburgh. That's the plan. Uh, almost 200 miles and there's only uh, a handful of miles left. One of the missing links is right here in Fairmont. So we have four miles missing in Fairmont, a handful of miles in Harrison County, and one mile in Parkersburg. Um, the big thing about our, of our rail trail, long distance rail trail, is that you have to have a, a continuation of the trail to make it work. We need people from Pennsylvania as visitors to come to Morgantown and then come to Fairmont, stay in Fairmont. And, and to um, speak what on the Reverend said, we want them to stay in Fairmont, spend money in Fairmont, shop locally, buy art, eat at our restaurants. So it's important that we finish these four miles. Now we're not recreating the wheel here. In this, uh, in this draft, we, I, I talk about the other studies that are in effect. You have many, many studies. Um, I pointed out a few here, and I just want to kind of go back and take a peek at it because I think it's important. From 2008, you have a pedestrian bridge. Uh, that pedestrian bridge is uh, in place of where the old nickel bridge is. That would be the connector from Palatine Park to downtown. Um, and to go forward, you have 2010 plan, 2014 connectivity plan, 2015, 2018, your comprehensive plan, uh, and then a connectivity plan from Parkersburg to Pittsburgh done by the National Rail Trail Alliance. All of these plans and more mention the issue we're working on today, which is connecting Fairmont on both sides of this trail. It's the missing link, it becomes a problem. So 
we're not recreating the wheel. We're actually going through all of these past studies. We're taking the good parts of these studies and we're incorporating that into what we're doing today. <coughs> the one difference is we're not trying to create one trail. And many of the studies are talking about utilizing the CSX property to complete this trail. Um, for those that have worked with the CSX um, and worked with rail trails, it can be difficult. They do not like to give up um, their property, even in scenarios, um, even in scenarios such as this, uh, where they have some um, unattainable land. They can't access some of this land yet they want to keep it. I'm going to start speaking loud. I want to walk over here and I want to just kind of go through I think it's so you can touch this. What I want to do is walk through three scenarios. And the reason we're doing three scenarios here is we have um, options. We have great options. I think some of the past failures of not getting this completed are trying to work with CSX, which is a long-term endeavor. So if you have a champion within your community, and that champion gets tired, gets old, moves away, the idea slowly dies with them. What we're doing is we're setting this up so that no matter who is in uh, office, um, who is in the planning department, who is in engineering, that they can take this, this booklet, utilize it, get funding, and get this accomplished. So we have three scenarios here, and you can probably see it better on your screen, but I want to point out. Um, this is industrial resources, so private property um, in Route 250 or Fairmont Avenue. And back here is the Norway Bridge. So that's the start of the rail trail that goes 13 miles to Shinston. So it's a fantastic rail trail. If you haven't been on it, I suggest you go. It's, it's fabulous. Uh, I'm surprised when I, when I hear that people haven't been on it. So in our booklet, we talk about three main trails. Each of these trails uses one segment um, completely from the, from the rail trail to 250. I won't talk much about it because it is the same trail for all three. What we have there is a, a, a section from this point forward about, two, about, about 0.3 miles that is already being used. And luckily the, the Wayne, uh, Waynes allow that to happen. <coughs> that is private property, but they, we maintain it. Uh, McPark maintains it and, and really keep it in nice shape. In our study, we're going to go around their property in a bench that's above the river, um, fairly easy uh, to access and, and to build, and around their property and then back on the road. And then we do what's called a on-road or share the road network. Now this is the low-hanging fruit. This is how we can be successful and this is what funding agencies want to see. They want to see you take their money, do something successful, so then they'll give you more money. Um, it, and this is an ongoing thing. If I always try to find that low-hanging fruit. Let's be successful. Let's show the community we can do it and show our funding agencies. Um, within, within our booklet, we'll show it share roads and, and share the road network up to 250. That's a very low-traveled road and it's flat, so it works out very well within uh, the rail trail community. Sharrows, if you're not familiar with, are, are chevron forms and, and a bicycle, and, it's, and, and you have a stencil and you put it on the road. So what we're doing is we're dedicating areas for, for in-town biking. And that can be done very easily with the staff you have. So that's the, the first segment. Now once we get to 250, now we have three segments, and you'll see the three different colors here. And, and what we're looking at is, is the low hanging fruit, which is the on street. And what we're using is Beverly. So we have Beverly to 14th and then falling over to 11th. There's a reason for that route. That route is fairly flat and it accesses East West Stadium, the city pool and the middle school. I think it's very important that we actually connect people to the community assets because this is just as much a community a trail as it is for visitors. We want to make sure that we're working both of those avenues. Um, once we get to 11th Street, 11th actually is uh, very mellow. There's many uh, steep hills in that neighborhood. 11th Street is not. 
Um, it's low volume. We've been watching the traffic flows on it. That is a very low volume road and it connects to the city, so it gives you an opportunity for safe routes to school funding as well. Um, as we get up there, we follow Gaston the rest of the way. So Gaston all the way to 3rd Street. We, we chose Gaston because of the elevation. Um, on Virginia Avenue, you have some pretty big hills. We're near 8th Street um, and 7th Street, you have some pretty big hills. So what we were looking at is Gaston, and Gaston also has businesses. Again, we want to invite people to stop at our businesses while they're riding these trails. So what we're doing is we're focusing the neighborhood into one road, creating this share the road network. Uh, what, and the, the beauty of gas is we have stop signs now. Um, in the past, when I was younger, there weren't, and there was a lot of traffic, and they were driving pretty fast through there. Um, in this area, we, we're stopping that flow, so we're keeping that safe, keeping people slow 25 miles an hour, and that's very important for the share of the road. Um, as it gets up to 3rd, we, we start down the street, I, actually, I'm sorry, 4th Street. We go down and under Everest which goes under the 3rd Street Bridge over to Cleveland and on to just below us down here um, at Madison Street. That's our stopping point for this study. Uh, the reason that's a stopping point is the city's taking on the west side and Mick Park is taking on the right. The, the little piece in the middle, which is the bridge I mentioned, there was already a study done for that, uh, 2008, I believe. So we're concentrating on that side. That route that I just mentioned is, um, is very easy for us to take care of now. It's signage, it is sharrows, and it's a matter of getting that information out to the public so they understand that this is our dedicated route and that we want children and families to use this and we want uh, the Allentown folks that we're trying to get into our community to run this route. Um, there has been one other on-street network done in the city. It, it utilized actually U.S. routes, state routes. Uh, those signs were put up, they've all been taken down. Um, that actually went up to 250 to, uh, from 250 to Country Club Drive over to Big Lots and down. That's pretty dangerous and I don't think I'd want to take my kids on that road on bicycles. Um, so what we want to do is stay on city streets, uh, low volume roads, um, low velocity. So within that, while we're working on getting the on-street, we actually start to think about the next two <coughs> options. These next two options have a different feel to it. Um, I'll go to option B in the book, is this one here. We have a mix that's on-street and on-trail. So what we're doing is there, we're starting to look at coming from uh, Madison, we're going through some property, <coughs> if, you, if we look way up here, so that property here we're coming across is actually Chamber of Commerce property. So we're utilizing public property to come through this area about halfway down the slope uh, from Everest. Within that, we start to come down this old track, this old Beltline track, as you can see it coming down through here. That old Beltline track is landlocked CSX property. So again, I mentioned that that's a little bit of an issue. It's just time. We have to work towards that. So and in that we have some great property and it's a great little route and it goes through businesses and it pops out on 10th Street and then you follow uh, right um, minor all the way to the end when you get to minor there's an opportunity to actually cut down to the CSX property along the river or to come back up 14th when I say um, that there's opportunities we have to keep in mind there's private property trails all across the country deal with this we understand that and we want to be sensitive to the property owners and during this process and we've put that in the booklet that we want to to meet with them see what their interests are and and work with them as trying to find some access routes to do that so keeping in mind if we have a property owner let's say for here that doesn't really want that trail to go through their property we have that backup to come to our on on road network all of these trails actually go under 250, not across 250. I, I, I need to mention that as well. That intersection is not a legal crossing. We can't send people across that road at that point. We want to make sure that we're going utilizing the DOH property and go underneath um, the road in that location. Now our third option 
um, is a wonderful option. I think it's the, probably more of a long-term effort as well because we're going under again 250, but in this orange area, that's CSX property. Uh, we would like to utilize that property, and that's what many of the studies say. Um, that's a typical response is let's try to get down to that little one to two percent grade and utilize that. We want to work towards that, but once we start to get to this point, um, our suggestion is try to work with the homeowners, property owners, and and utilize the maybe maybe the 20 feet of the property that's that butts up against CSX. In doing so, we start to create a buffer from their property to the, to the railroad tracks. And we, and we don't have to work with CSX, we work with property owners to do something. Um, in this scenario, we, you see it going around the belt line, and then at this point, it starts to hit the bottom of 9th Street. And then 9th Street, we follow it all the way through. We have three, pro three private properties, the rest are public properties. And so that it, do, it sounds insurmountable until you start to think about it. We're only talking a, a half a dozen property owners, um, and, and there's other routes. So each of these routes works together, and what it does is it creates this wonderful network for the community. We are connecting two rail trails, but within that, this whole neighborhood becomes this pedestrian-oriented community. And I think that's an important aspect when you start to see this influx of people from the oil and gas industry, for, from, the, uh, from NASA and the technology industry, they're moving from places that have trails. They expect something like this. So we want to um, kind of gear that neighborhood towards it. It's a perfect situation for it. So what, what we're looking at, um, just to kind of go back across is, we have these opportunities. We have many, many studies. All these studies are saying the same thing. They're saying that we need to complete this for the community and for economic development. We are the missing link, and we have, uh, I think there's 54 counties across uh, three or four states now that are working towards finishing this giant network. We're one of these missing links, and it's very important that we finish it. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Uh, I think you guys have a great opportunity here. And uh, I, I applaud Fairmont for, for going through and working through this study. This is our draft that you have in front of us. Um, there will be a few things added to this. Um, within this document will also be some sheets that go with each of the routes. Those sheets will showcase a little more of the cost of the projects and the staging of them. So how are we gonna phase those projects in? Um, the idea is that you take each of these individual routes and the information behind it, you submit that when, when you're ready for a, and, and funds are available for a grant. We don't want this document just to go sit on the shelf somewhere. We have plenty of those. This needs to be a working document that somebody from the city can utilize to go after funding and to work towards this effort. And I think what we've laid out is something that is achievable early on, and we're going to work towards the off-road routes um, as, as things move forward. But you mentioned on the original <coughs> low-hanging fruit route, the blue one, that there's not really going to be much funding needed for that. Is that correct? What that you that said? is correct. Um, there are a couple areas. If you look from 250 going west on the West Fork River Rail Trail, um, that area has on road, but it also has a, a section of trail. That trail that goes around Industrial Boulevard. Now, there's no designs or anything within that. Um, actually, the city already has a laid out concept that goes around. Uh, around industrial resources. So you have some of these things already in place. It's a matter of putting all those dominoes together so we can push them down. So what are the estimated costs for A, B, and C? Um, that, that was one of the things we wanted to talk with, the, with all of you first to make sure everybody's excited about this project and that you like the routes that we've chosen. Um, we will finalize those next week, uh, or the following week. Next week is uh, a holiday, so we'll do it the following week. And they're, they're a little bit different, so there's options. What we're going to give you is the broad picture, uh, and that's what your funding agency is going to look at. But there's some areas, like underneath the Route 250 bridge, 
that takes some additional design. So what we're going to do is we'll put a number in there that we think will cover uh, engineering, design, and construction, uh, but you really won't have a final number for that until you've done that design work. So in that scenario, I would be um, suggesting you go after the funding for the design portion first. And then after you finish that a year later, then you would go after the funding for the. And, and there the is funding from what I understand at the state level and maybe the federal as well. Yes, I think most of it you're going to see is at the state level. It's federal dollars, uh, but it's administered through the state. Okay. Um, there's also brownfield money. Some um, Mon River Trails has some different funds. The Benetton Center has some funds. So there's a, there's a number of different things. And the idea is to take this information and layer those funds on top of each other. You want to leverage as much as you can with the public dollars to make that happen. And Jim, does the city the have, uh, oops, go ahead. <laughs> does the city have authority to eminent domain property for a rails trail, rails to trail? Um, that is something right now that the rail trail conservancy is working through with the state. Um, so there is a law, um, I, I can't think of the law off the top of my head, that does allow for it. It's called um, underutilized properties, I believe. Uh, but you'll see that you'll see that coming up in the future. Um, the, the National Rail Trail Conservancy will be bringing that to the forefront uh, for West Virginia, and and I'm sure they will be approaching uh, Fairmont or Marion County about it. Because this CSX property is probably never ever going to be used. Absolutely this. not. It's actually it's, being used to store buses and yeah. things of that nature yeah. at this point. Don't it? Um, yes, when on the share the roads, yes. um, those are like Gaston is, um, uh, so I wouldn't call it not busy, but um, mm -hmm. how do you mark, are you going to have uh, bike lanes? I mean, the roads are so narrow, really. Yeah, there's, how, there's how multiple ways to do it. Um, to start out, I would do it similar to our neighboring state, Maryland. Um, when we do sharrows, there's a scientific uh, way to do this. We engineer exactly where those sharrows go on the road and exactly where the signs go. Um, I, it, is, it, it is a busy road, um, comparatively speaking, <coughs> to other areas, but um, that's how we're going to help make it safe by putting everybody on one and, and manning that. The, there are opportunities to do other things, but they're much, much more expensive. So there's opportunities, and you'll see it in some, if you look at some of the other studies, they suggest it as well, is doing one way down gas and one way back Virginia. Um, you can still get the same amount of parking you have. You could have bike lanes separated, but you're talking about a lot more dollars and, 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 a, and a much more expense. So I think that is a whole other animal. Right now you can finish it with doing it with the sharrows and the signage. It's it's same as just somebody riding their bike on the main street, except you're making it official with your markings, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You Isn't are it the not same? supposed to be riding bikes on sidewalks, right? Um, and, and that's everywhere, right? And our issue is that we, as as drivers, um, think we own the road, but uh, people riding the bikes actually pay tax dollars as well. So this is something that, uh, as a society, um, I've worked a lot overseas. It's a little bit different. They see it differently. They actually see that bike as transportation. I see these trails as transportation because there's many people riding our bus systems that could easily just get on a bike and go to the city pool or go to a ball game um, or drive downtown and go get some coffee or go to a shop. Those are things that we need to think about. This isn't just all about recreation. It's also about uh, transportation. And that's where some of the funds come from is transportation alternatives. And with the eminent domain issue, you mentioned that you have alternative routes that you really wouldn't have to do eminent domain necessarily with what you've designed for us, right? I would hope that you wouldn't have to. I would hope that CSX would work with you. Um, and private property, too. And, and private property as well. I think you want to be a good steward and, uh, and, and, and be part of the community. Uh, eminent domain is not, not that for, for a trail. I think we right. can work with property owners. Um, there's a lot of different ways, whether that's um, right-of-ways or easements. Um, there's limited liability on them when, when we're talking about a free trail. And there's a law um, getting ready to take effect that will remove that liability. I have two questions. If, yes, sir. If I heard you right, did you say at, on 250 at the bridge that none of these routes go over 250, they all go under? Correct. 
that's including option A. Which yes. Is that going to, how do you get from, if you're going to go under the bridge, how do you get from there to Beverly Road? Yes, you have to have a little bit of a switchback to go down and a switchback to come back up. It's um, West Virginia DOH property on both sides of the bridge and under the bridge. But, but it's, so it's not too steep to do that right there? It's, you're going to switch back. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I do that quite a bit. Um, uh, you know, we make ADA ramps, same with bike ramps. Um, it, for an example, if you wanted to look up Frostburg, uh, Maryland, we have uh, there's switchbacks that go up to town from um, from their railroad station. That railroad station is part of uh, the Gap Trail. So if you, so, if a lot of people will take that scenic um, train up to that point, take their bike off the train, and then ride from there. The second question I got, I didn't realize till you said something that uh, McPark was working on the, the east side, which yes. is fine. I that, yes, I'm sure that'll get worked out fine, but. The key to both of them is still not going to be a connecting trail unless we get that pedestrian bridge, which may be a while because of money. Yes. So until that happens, you know, as this plant has it ending at Madison Street, basically where the bridge is or would be. Until that happens, is there a way to put this thing across the Third Street Bridge and then down into Palatine Park? Or is that not a possibility because of the design or who owns the bridge or whatever oh no you can you can use those bridges when bikes uh, my suggestion would be the million million dollar bridge yeah um it's a little well, safe yeah, it's too. safer than the the third street bridge um i've been on that and cars come around that corner pretty quickly um a, as a designer i would prefer the million dollar bridge but is there room on the high level bridge the million dollar bridge to yeah. put the bike lane say the, the third street bridge is basically a two-lane bridge correct with, with a turning lane in the middle or room in the middle would could we put it on that be, just because of available space i I, I would put it on the lanes uh i put it in the in the travel lanes and do share the roads as okay. opposed to lanes when we're we're talking about bike lanes we're starting to look at more space um, the bridges you have are kind of condensed at this point um, so as we introduce and that's why I, i'm not talking about the bridges yet because you need to introduce this to your community get people using it, showcase how it works, and get people to slow down and understand that pedestrians are gonna be there. We dedicate them to one road right now. Um, as this gets going, then we start to look at those crossings and the bridges. Uh, seasoned riders ha will have no problem going over it. In fact, they do now. If you look on West Virginia's trail um, uh, GIS page, there's already a trail through the town uh, on US routes and across the bridge. And, and the people doing that American Discovery Trail, they have no problem doing it. I like to think of families. Well, I take my wife and kids on that trail and feel comfortable with it. That's the way I always look at a design. How far away is the East Fairmont? Have they started? Uh, yes. Just curious. Um, they're looking at um, some of that CSX property, some of it's owned um, by McPark, um, but they're, they're, th they're working on that. Okay. Else and, and, that, and that's from Morgantown Avenue to the Palatine Park. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if we're going to be looking for grants and uh, funding from different entities. I have two questions, really. Why not include the bridge? If we're going to think about a good product, why not think big and do it right? I mean, if we're going to be asking for money, from different sources, why not say let's do it rather than going up almost to a nice product and then stopping? Because the way things go in government, uh, if you get a little piece done, it takes forever to get the next piece and then forever to get the next piece. So why not look at the whole picture? Why not say to state, private sector, the Fed, uh, this is what we need in order to complete this. We have political horses that we can talk to, uh, so why not do the whole picture, just as, uh, as opposed to <clears throat> just one segment? And the second question I have, you know, CX, CSX isn't a problem just for us. Uh, you know, they've got to be 
putting roadblocks up for rail to trail in other places. How have, how have other places dealt with them? Do they shame them or do they? It doesn't work. What do they, shame doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. Okay. So what, how do they get around them? How do they get them to cooperate in other places? Um, CSX has a ever-changing way of doing work. So you could be working with them for two years at accessing property or acquiring property, and then when that person leaves, mm -hmm. the, the project stops and they start all over again. So it's just you have to keep working at it. Um, if you talk to the Rail Trail Conservancy, they work at it every day, and sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're not. Cumberland, Maryland has a rail with trail. They actually allowed a trail on the same area as a live rail. I've seen it. I've never seen it happen anywhere else. Yeah. So it, this is just an ongoing thing, and you have to be fluid with them. My, my way has always been, let's work beside them instead of with them. If we can work with private landowners and public land, uh, as opposed to trying to work the hardest route, which might take 15 years or 20 years, if I can do it in three or four, I'd rather do that. But going back to your bridge uh, question, um, it's actually not part of my project currently, but um, we have, I've, I've actually done one of your other studies in 2014, I think. We've talked about that bridge. Everybody's yeah. talked about the bridge. The bridge has its own study. Yeah. Okay, I would suggest you get the trail done first. That's the easy pickings. The, the bridge itself, that's a big dollar item. That's a big endeavor. Right now, if you're building a bridge and you have nothing on the other side, you spend an awful lot of money to do that. I would rather show, and this is my opinion only, I'd rather show all of these positives and, and the accomplishments to build towards, <coughs> yes, building that bridge, because ultimately, you want that bridge. Yeah. I agree. With your best guess, if we went with option A, which is the least expensive, um, how long would it take to get that implemented to actually to it actually be a usable trail? I think you could do that this year. The the stumbling block that you have, because you have an easy section to all the way to 250. So from here downtown. To 250 at the bridge, that's easy. Um, at 250, you have a little bit of more of a project there that needs some engineering um, and needs some real cost analysis under that bridge, and then you have another easy section on industrial um, industrial boulevard. I always call it boulevard; it's, it's road or street, isn't it? Um, but then you have a second section that goes around around that property. So that's working with a property owner. Um, you have a concept design in place, but you have some costs there. The rest of it's fairly easy. So we could get all but a little piece of that implemented in bus, maybe bus spring. Absolutely. And then, and then work then, on. Uh, we're the we're piece talking about signage, by the river. signage, sharrows, and then public um, a public session to get that word out, marketing, um, explaining to people what you're doing, how you're doing it, and why you're doing it. Uh, I think that's very important. And I and when I open up a trail, I always try to make a little festival or something around it. Bring every school kid out there. We're hooking it up to the school, the middle school. You know, we want these people to understand that this is all about the community and and we're looking at safety first within the community. So I'm always thinking about how do you market that piece of it as well and make sure that happens when you open it. Great. Anybody else? Just with the signage, would you lower the speed limit too? I mean, because I think it's 25 now there. Would you lower it? I, I never um, just guess on that. That's actually a traffic analysis that you do. Um, in, in neighboring states, I, I bring up Maryland because Maryland is one of the most progressive uh, pedestrian bicycle uh, com communities across the nation. And uh, they're kind of ahead of everybody else in the region. Uh, you, you probably understand that. Um, that is an engineered question, and I don't. I would never guess just to say do that. Um, I would actually u utilize the engineered numbers. Is that it? Thank you, Jim. All right, we really thank, appreciate it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Very much. Okay. <clears throat>
Okay, on to consideration of council business. Would the clerk please read the ordinance? Okay, before you read the Is there a motion to introduce the ordinance? Sorry, I'm, just, I'm waking up. So I move. Second? Second. Okay. Would the clerk please read the ordinance by synopsis? An ordinance of the Council of the City of Fairmont providing for and authorizing the purchase of the certain parcels of real estate situated in the City of Fairmont, Fairmont District, Marion County, and being parcels 94 and 95 of tax map 3-1, and more particularly described in the certain deed dated November 2, 1995, and of record in the Marion County Clerk's Office in deed book 929 at page 814 from Hallwood, L.C., a Virginia Limited Liability Company ratification. By this proposed ordinance, the Council for the City of Fairmont provides for and authorizes the purchase of the parcels of real estate described in the ordinance titled from Hallwood LC, a Virginia Limited Liability Company, also known as Hallwood Limited Liability Company. The purchase will serve as a public purpose. The consideration to be paid for the real estate is $180,000. The purchase is subject to the terms and conditions set forth in the purchase agreements attached. In addition, by this proposed ordinance, the Council for the City of Fairmont ratifies, confirms, and approves all actions taken in furtherance with the transaction contemplated by this ordinance, which may have occurred prior to the ordinance's effective date. Thank you. All in favor of setting a public hearing, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries by unanimous vote. The public hearing will be set for January 14th. Agenda item number two is for the adoption of a resolution. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Would the clerk please read the resolution by synopsis? A resolution of the Council for the City of Fairmont endorsing the Holly Ball sponsored by the Auxiliary to United Hospital Incorporated to be held at the Robert H. Mollahan Research Center on Saturday, February 15, 2020. This proposed resolution provides for the City of Fairmont support for the Auxiliary to United Hospital Center's Holly Ball to be held at the Robert H. Mollahan Research Center on Saturday, February 15, 2020. This resolution contains a disclaimer that by supporting this event, no relationship is created between the City of Fairmont and the event sponsor. Thank you. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Kennedy? Yes. Councilmember Bledsoe? Yes. Councilmember Rice? Yes. Councilmember Grubb? Yes. Councilmember Manella? Yes. Councilmember Blood? Yes. Councilmember Mason? Yes. Councilmember Yan? Yes. Mayor Merrifield? Yes. Declare this resolution adopted. Agenda item number three, I, may, I move that we reappoint to the Board of Zoning and Appeals for a three-year term, Ann Boyard, the term to end January 1st, 2023. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Councilmember Yan? Yes. Councilmember Mason? Yes. Councilmember Manella? Yes. Councilmember Bledsoe? Yes. Councilmember Rice? Yes. Councilmember Grubb? Yes. Councilmember Kennedy? Yes. Councilmember Blood? Yes. Mayor Merrifield? Yes. I declare Ann Boyard for the reappointment of the Zoning Board of Zoning Appeals, three year term ending January 1st, 2023. Agenda item number four is for a reappointment to the Historic Preservation Review Commission for Jason Wright. A three year term. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Would the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Rice? Yes. Councilmember Member Manella? Yes. Councilmember Grubb? Yes. Councilmember Yan? Yes. Councilmember Blood? Yes. Councilmember Kennedy? Yes. Councilmember Mason? Yes. Councilmember Bledsoe? Yes. Mayor Merrifield? Yes. I declare Jason Wright reappointed to the Historic Preservation Review Commission, three year term to end January 1st. 2023. Next, I move that we go into executive session pursuant to West Virginia Code 
6-9A, 4B, 2A, and City Charter 2.11A, 1A, to consider matters arising from the appointment, employment, retirement, promotion, transferred, demotion, disciplining, resignation, discharge, dismissal, or compensation of a city officer. We will conduct no business after we come out of executive session. Is there a second? Second. All, of, all in favor of going into executive session, aye. say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We are adjourned to executive session at 752.